All right, guys, so this video, I'm going to talk about why I retired at 57, why I retired kind of early, right? Uh, I worked in the high tech field for, my God, since uh, out of school. So bounced all over the country. That was kind of the good, good thing. It's when you're young and you do uh, do technology stuff, software, uh, defense contracting, stuff like that. You have flexibility. And in your younger years, it's great. Go see the country. Enjoy it. And uh, that was great. So 20 to 30s was fun. After that, you get burned out. And I think it's with any career, having done it more than like, say, once you reach the 10 year mark, you're thinking, is this really what I want to keep doing? But then you kind of do in my situation, you keep going, you get the golden handcuffs where it's hard to go do something else. Uh, you keep buying new and shiny objects, bigger houses. You fall into that, uh, uh, what do you call it? Salary income creep where you keep buying stuff because you got raised you made more money and in my field you could jump to a new job and get freaking 30 percent more in your base salary or hourly rate uh other than staying at the current company where you get five or six percent so you just jump it was a, almost a new environment and i remember people when i was young i just jumped every year and a half they said it's gonna hurt your career i laughed at them said dude I'm making three times as much as you right now. So, you know, get in line and shut up. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. So 57 hit. I've been doing this stuff. Moved to a different state. Came into a new environment. I, I came from a high performance environment where people were working together great. Multiple logs burn brighter. We all helped each other. We were excelling. We were like cowboys getting stuff out, kicking stuff out the door, doing high tech, doing new stuff came down to a small field office down in Florida. And then I dealt with the, uh, this is my molehill thing where you come in as a new player and you're, you know, I'm all full of uh, energy, testosterone. Let's go, let's build some cool stuff. This is a cool mission here. Boy, you really can piss off the hornet's nest because you're coming in and they're all just kind of waiting to retire and drop dead. So you come in and make them look bad because you're actually making the customer happy. You're my God, who's this guy? And uh, boy, I had knives out on me, man. People were gunning for me and it just hit me. What is the point here? I want to do good work. I want to support the customer. I just want to make some cool stuff, but I ended up dealing with personalities, people having the knives out, jealous of me, snide comments. It's like, I just said, dude, I'm here to work and do a good job. And you get all these egotistical, just mean, toxic people. Even the boss lady I worked with, I had more skills than her. But again, you're dealing with that toxicity. I'm the boss lady. I'm here to prove myself. All that stuff kept adding up. And plus the work environment, like I said, the physical work environment was pretty crappy. As a senior, I was sitting in a crappy work area. You could not concentrate. You dealt with toxic people coming by, touching you, interrupting you. Even when I had headphones on trying to concentrate, it just wears on you day after day. So all this stuff was really compounding. And I'm going, how much money do I really need to be putting up with this crap and the toxicity of the boss, babe, people making lies about you? I'm just going, man, I just want to come to work and do great things. That was the impetus for me saying, I'm done. I kind of butted heads with the people. And basically they just said, all right, we're, we want you out. I said, all right, I'm out. So it was just stupid. And I said, thanks you for making a decision for me. I came and I ended up through my network, hooking up with another guy who needed uh, help. And I started doing remote work before it was cool to be remote, right? So I did remote work, uh, still making big bucks, right? Remotely, I said, this is the way to go. Because I actually had my environment I liked. I was in my house. I could work any hour, late hours, get the job done and have fun with it. But then after about a year, I found I just was not happy working for somebody else, dealing with this technology. And I realized that I'm done. I'm burned out. I just hate this stuff and I'm not motivated. So that ended. I went and did another little thing short term, dealt with another bad contract uh, client situation where they were, uh, we were subbing and they kind of bait and switched our small little four man company and uh, basically used us. And it was just disgusting. Uh, it was a big uh, defense contractor, but yeah, idiots. So that was it. And I said, all right, I'm done. And I just kind of floated around, got in some, some crypto mining. Uh, at this point, all my debt 
was just in the house. I had no bills other than just the house, you know, living expenses, but no car debt, nothing else. Uh, the wife worked, so she was covering the medical, which is nice. Uh, that is a big plus. So in retirement, you do have to think about what will your expenses be. I was kind of just, I was done and it showed and it was just, it came to that point where just get out, just let it happen. Boom. You know, I, I'm a guy that usually butts heads with people sometimes because I just don't like seeing the BS and I call people out and people don't like that. It's funny. They don't, people like to be called out. So here I am. What am I doing? Uh, yeah, expenses wise, you just really got to look at your expenses. You, you'll find you don't need to spend much money when you're not really doing, going to the job, driving. You don't have to dress up. You don't have to eat out. You don't have to put on the fake facade of dealing with people you can't stand. People at work are not your friends. People at work are not your friends. You are not in a family. Uh, the company tries to push this culture crap. We're your family, but boy, you say one thing against the uh, grand poobah cult leader, you're out. It's, a, it's amazing how that works. These guys are just egomaniacs, bosses, boss ladies, boss girls. It's just very mentally unhealthy, dudes. It's, geez, yeah. You'll know. You'll know what your gut will tell you. Either you learn to suck it up, put your head down and just keep your mouth shut and get your money and then plan your exit. That may be the better strategy. I was just like, F this, zero Fs, I'm done. But yeah, you got to look at your expenses. Uh, I do have a mortgage, which is, it's a big expense, but I have a 2.85% mortgage rate. It's going to be like 500 years, so I paid it off, I don't know, 30 years, right? Maybe down to 27. Who knows? I have no idea. But uh, the plan for me is uh, once, once uh, maybe two years from now, we will dump this house, hopefully for a profit. It's doubled since we bought it. We'll dump this, downsize, hopefully pay cash. For the new house once the housing market collapses next year uh, after the election year we are in election year and only a few years only a few times in history has there been a recession during an election year so i'm thinking after the election year or actually the election whatever you know shenanigans happen then the uh, housing market and the whole economy will just collapse like a house of cards uh so yeah i hopefully then dump this house before then Maybe rent for a year and then go buy a house cheap somewhere in a state that doesn't have high insurance and high property taxes, like the, uh, the lovely state of Florida, which is becoming very expensive and unlivable because of these high prices. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the mass exodus on Florida is going to start. It's just overpriced and you can't even get insurance. Uh, that's another story. So you got to think about your expenses and that's part of it. Property tax, insurance, even if you pay off your house, if HOA fees property tax insurance keep going up that's gonna be almost as much as a freaking mortgage so you got to consider that as well go to an area that's uh less prone to natural disasters and has a uh, reasonable property taxes easier said than done but anyway the core point is expenses so anyway i got through youtube here and i just said why am i retired early uh, i went through some of the videos and this guy right here is uh retire early at 500k He's a good watch. Go check him out. He had some valid points. Uh, and his two are just expenses. And uh, invest wisely. He's following a 4% rule, which has been proven over 100 years to be pretty exact. If you have a, a nest egg and you're pulling 4% down, that nest egg will kind of sustain itself throughout time. Yeah, so that's something to consider too. Now the downfalls of... Uh, the downfalls of retirement earlier, what do you do with yourself? You have to have hobbies, which you'll find you get sick of after six months. Uh, I know people will get into fishing and then they get sick of it. They spend all the money on gear and then they go out and say, okay, I've done this. It's boring. What else am I going to do? So my advice, if you're going to get into hobbies, rent the stuff. Do not incur like a thousand, couple thousand dollars in uh, equipment for your hobby like if you want to do woodworking and that you're gonna spend so much money in tools it's almost gonna it's not worth it go rent stuff if you can make sure you like it or work at a place where you can use their tools uh, and, or, or just rent the fishing gear rent the jet skis don't go buy boats don't go buy shiny objects never buy anything that floats seriously <laughs> you will go broke and people say I want to buy a boat I want when I rich I want to buy a boat and then I say well Guess what? You won't be rich anymore because boats are a bottomless pit 
and uh, I do not advise ever buying a boat. All right, enough of that. So he also talks about, yeah, your expenses. Uh, good points there. And uh, medical, you can actually look at the Cobra, which is really expensive. And there's the ACA, that Obamacare crap. You can look at that. Some people do that. Or if you have a spouse that's still working, you can get on her, you know, stay on their, that family plan. That's the big thing is medical coverage to cover yourself till you get up to 65. If you make that, you never know. You're not, you know, no one's promised tomorrow. So you may not make it that long. So you got to enjoy life. People think you're going to live forever. And guess what? You're not. Uh, people just drop dead. It's amazing. <laughs> you just think you're going to live to 85 or something. No. It's not guaranteed. Yeah, it is not. Also, when you're retired, there is a fear which people don't address is you're going to have a lot of time to think and you're going to have demons uh, in your mind. You're going to have thoughts. You're going to live with yourself because you're going to have a lot of time to think. You don't have the job, the J-O-B just over broke to preoccupy yourself. Uh, this is some concern for people, and uh, it's a valid concern. Uh, you have demons. You'll be sitting all day going, if you're not preoccupied, you're going to start dwelling and maybe get depressed and stuff like that because you kind of first lost the purpose with your day, and then now you're thinking about all your past stuff you regret or stuff you did or people done to you, and uh, it kind of gets into a vicious cycle. If you ever have watched this series, the reality series called Alone, even though these people are sent out in the wilderness, and they have skills to survive and they, they got it down. They know how to hunt, have food, fire. They're good. The thing that breaks them is they are alone with their thoughts. They are alone with their demons, their regrets. And that is usually what makes people tap out because they miss being around people, which is a diversion and uh, to keep them from thinking about their, uh, their lives. They're in their heads so much. It actually just says, I'm done. I got to get out of this alone world. So that is a valid concern. So how do you deal with that? Yeah, hobbies, like I said, but that only goes so far. You find you're not really into the hobby. Uh, what I've done is I did a part-time job where I go out and I, I'm on the water doing stuff, helping out people. And it's easy. It's fun. You're dealing with a different group of people from the, say, the corporate high-tech world because they're in kind of a different, it's a different group of people. So you have to adjust and pivot to know how to work with these people. Uh, it's a different mindset. A different level of toxicity uh they're not as um how do you say it they're not corporate they don't have that structure in their lives they're more a uh, gypsy like and they don't they kind of live paycheck to paycheck it's a whole different world when you're coming in with um a huge nest egg under your belt and you're working with these guys you got to keep that quiet just keep to yourself try to be cordial they are not your friends. Even though you're doing a part-time job, these are not your friends. Remember that, guys. Watch what you say. Don't disclose your true thoughts. Uh, and minimize contact. Just get in there and have fun with your part-time job. But you're not your buddies. you got to watch out for that. That's my only advice. But go do a part-time job. There's stuff out there. Go get a certificate so you can work in some of these jobs. Go get a license. Uh, yeah, I recommend that. That way it gives purpose. Me, I'm getting a little... What, what is it? I've done it for almost two years now, this part-time job. And it's almost now I'm realizing it may not be for me. I've done it for two years, but I'm kind of, maybe let's go do something else now. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm an employee again, and uh, which I am, but I just want a little more freedom and less part of do what I say and, you know, company culture crap. It's like, I just want to go out and do this and it's fine. But uh, it, again, after two years, I think, all right, let's go try something else. But again, it covers my mortgage right now. Uh, that's fine. I'm just going to milk that for maybe a little bit. We'll see, hopefully a month or two, and then go try something different. So the real trick, the philosophy in retirement is uh, how to reinvent yourself. That's the challenge. And not be alone with your thoughts if you do have issues with that or you're concerned about that. Keep yourself busy. If you sit and do nothing and stare at the computer all day, you're, you probably have a two-year life expectancy. And they call that the IBM 2, where these guys worked at IBM for 30 years, and then they retire. They're sitting on the couch. They have no idea what to do with their day. And their, their body and their mind just shuts down, and they pass away. Look it up. It's, it's, a, it's a, a statistical fact. Uh, you got to keep yourself healthy and busy. If you like what you're doing in your job, keep working. I don't care. That's up to you. 
All right, so let's go through some of these videos. Uh, what do we got? Six reasons to retire as soon as you can. Oh, let me turn my cursor on. Hold on a sec. Let's do this right here. Cursor. One second. There we go. So he's good. This is retire early 500K. Six reasons to retire as soon as you can. It's, I mean, when you're playing these videos, guys, go through and do 1.5 speed. You can't spend all day watching these videos or go nuts. It's like consuming too much of one content. It'll start warping your brain a little bit. Pull out the little nuggets of information, digest them. So far, this guy, retire early 55 k has some sound advice. He's like, dude, what are you waiting for? You know, go do it. All right, there's some other thing. Like, the, then you get all the negative stuff. What no one tells you about early retirement, the truth. And then here's one, how to retire early at 540K. I get nervous when I see anything from the mainstream media, CNBC, NBC, CN, all the mainstream media. I would just not, I would not watch any of that because I think it's propaganda. So you just got to watch some of these. Be, be wary, doubt, but verify anything from mainstream. That's why YouTube is there. It's for independent people putting out stuff. When you see these mainstream guys coming through and putting out their content, you got to say, no, get out of here. This is not your sandbox. Uh, this is what a three minute early time. It looks like, oh my God, come on, man. <laughs> I hate these things. Be worried about that real early retirement example. Three million, <laughs> come on. Most people don't have anything near that. Uh, let's see, Ret early retirement, how to invest in taxable account. They give you all the steps. What happens to my social security benefits if I retire <laughs> early? Uh, what age is an early retirement? To me, retirement is getting out of the job where you have to work and you're not really enjoying it. Retirement to me is having the income like where you can get zero Fs, not F you money, but hey, I don't need to do this, but I want to do this, or I have a passion for it. If you want to go do a business, go do it. You'll have more stress, but at least it's yours. Uh, getting out of working for the toxic boss girl or these company culture things where you can't stand anymore, or like me, I've done the same thing for 30 years. I'm done. You know, I don't mind the tech, but I just got sick of the environment. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm kind of sick of the tech because it changes. It's always, yeah, I am sick of it because you're always chasing that latest shiny object from the AWS platform to uh, now the Google Cloud. It's just enough is enough. Pick one and let's stick with it. Now you got AI. <laughs> it's like AI is actually going to replace a lot of these developers. So if you're a developer, you're done. If you're a web developer, it's over, Johnny, because um, Google Sites already makes websites with a click of a button. Uh, GoDaddy, all these things. And then even AI is going to start generating web pages. So if you're a web developer, graphics designer, you're over. It's gone. You're going to be out of a job with AI. <clears throat> AI is going to replace you. So you got to start looking down the road too. Just don't put your head in the sand. Is your career going to be uh, pretty much made obsolete with AI? And a lot of the data handling people, data analysts, uh, model generators, web developers, even programmers to the basic level programming people are going to be replaced because right now with the uh, chat GPT, you can train your own model with the chat, chat GPT pro. You can train your own model and guess what? It writes Python code for you to generate and read in your files. It would take months for a regular engineer to write this crap. And this thing does it like boom uh, under a few hours. It's ridiculous. If not faster. Yeah, it's over Johnny for developers, which is good. I'm sick of developers too. So go uh, learn how to use your hands, become a handyman. But a lot of these guys can't even change their own tire, change their oil. So it's going to be an interesting world. I think if you can work with your hands as a hobby or a part-time job in retirement, early retirement, you're going to do well. You're going to not have to worry about anything else. You're going to, hey, I can go uh, work on cars, uh, do handyman stuff, <clears throat> help people out. People do not know how to use their hands anymore. So that is a, that's a, that's a secret uh, tip right there, pro tip. All right, what else? There was one video on the show here. Let's see. And I lost it. Where did it go? Hold on a sec. Let me find it. Here he is. Hold on. Retirement. I don't even know what to make of this stat. Four thousand dollars a month on a four percent rule that would require one point two million dollars in retirement to get this money. 
This guy doesn't make much sense what he's saying. Most don't know how much they need to retire. If this helps, wife and I can live comfortably in Northern Virginia, assuming kids are gone and no mortgage for 4000 a month. That would require, per, for, based on the 4% rule, uh, let's go through. His head's in the way. 60% of the retirement k I don't even know where to make it. Yeah. $4,000 a month. Oh, yeah. It would require a uh, $1.2 million portfolio based on the 4% rule. Most people don't have that. But again, retirement, if you're not going to do a part-time job, is very personal to everybody. When you watch these damn YouTube videos, it's all customizable to you. Every, every person is unique. Don't, go be, don't run out and get an advisor because they're going to charge you an arm or leg and not really do much for you. CFPs, I mean, they're just car salesmen. They're going to try to sell you crap. You don't need annuities, vol, life insurance. It's, it's all a scam. Just watch the grift. The grift is real. Now, they want your money. You work your whole life for it, and they want to take your money and put it in their pockets. So, all right, let's go on. Let's look at the comments. That's usually good. Uh, let's see. My husband and I won't have a mortgage when we retire and no debt. We plan on living on about 1500 to 2000 a month. Okay. The comments usually give the best information on some of these videos. Even though this guy didn't make much sense, he's just pointing out how much you, most people don't retire. He's just saying, yeah, you need 1.2 to pull 4000 out. Oh, let's see. So $500,000 a year yields $20,000. So let's do that again. $500,000 investments, uh, nest egg yields $20,000 a year using the 4% rule. Add in the average Social Security check of $1,800 a month, which is $21,600 in a year, you have now $41,600. Okay, that's right. Assuming no mortgage, that is enough for a single person. Now, if you're married, even if we assume the spouse never worked, they can also claim a spousal benefit of $900 a month or an additional $10,800 per year. Add that to the 41,600 and you now have 52,400. More than the 48,000 needed uh, that was quoted in the video. Yeah, I mean, you just gotta sit down and do the numbers. It's highly personal to everybody. And uh, then you'll know. I'm 54, my wife and I are very worried about our future gas and food prices rising daily. We've had our savings to a no with the cost of living into the stratosphere and we are finding it impossible to replace them. We can uh, get by, but can't, but can't seem to get ahead. My condolences to anyone retiring in this crisis 30 years nonstop just for a crooked system to take all you work for. Yeah, again, I keep saying the George Carlin line, it's an American dream. It's called that because you have to be asleep to believe it. It's a crooked system. All right, my wife and I are both veterans. She makes 4,500 MVA comp per month. I make a 2,300. MVA comp. She is employed. I make uh, six thousand, six thousand per month for my job. My question is, how are some people able to retire on four k or less? I feel like I would need at least fifteen k per month to retire on. Well, that's a tax situation. Uh, again, when you're only drawing lower, you're going to be in a lower tax bracket at twelve percent or under. Whereas this guy is probably in a twenty-two percent tax bracket. Or something it's all a tax problem let's see what this guy says taxes yeah I mean retirement is also a tax equation with the health insurance you have to personalize it for yourself there's a great tool out there an application called new retirement go check it out newretirement.com uh, there's a two-week free trial give it a chance it, it actually will give you scenarios on that and your probability of success in a retirement at any age not i mean we're not just talking about 60s we're talking 40 30 40 50 whatever you put in the numbers and you run the models and you run the scenarios and the pessimism scales and stuff like that and it'll give you a, a fairly good idea where you're at all right 15k a month is an enormous income how much do you need depends largely on your expenses exactly my wife and I are both Army retirees and 100% VA. We work, uh, we both work professional jobs and have rental property income. If we can cut out our expenses before retirement, pay off the house and rental property, we can live a life we never dreamed we could afford. Thank you both for your service. Okay. 
I live in a twelve hundred dollars. Wait, I live on twelve hundred dollars a month. All expenses, okay. It's all on your expenses, guys. If you want to keep pissing away money on shiny cars and all this stuff, you're gonna go broke. Yeah, quit buying crap. Get a Toyota. It'll last forever. Let's see. And dual income makes retirement that much easier. Exactly. If you're single versus the retirement. Me, I'm married, and that does help out with my medical insurance, health insurance. So I'm not even going to hide that. If it wasn't for that, I'd be like, oh, shit, how am I going to cover health insurance? That is a big question. And there is the ACA uh, Obamacare crap. If you're into that, you can check that out. I, I have not gone through that yet. I'm curious about it, though. Uh, let's see. The wide majority of people will not achieve, even achieve saving 500000 Also, the financial folks are uh, basing your savings for 30 years after retirement, which a lot of us ain't going to make it to 95 years old. Be reasonable in how much you really need, including SS, 401k, IRA, and personal savings. What does he say? Well, with 500 k in-house, none of that is a surprise. Yeah, okay, gotcha. My uh, investment strategy to invest in rental properties and other side hustles that will continue to provide income after I quit my W-2. Yep. Side hustles are not a problem. That'll keep you busy, like I said. Wrong, because he's not including Social Security. They will need a whole lot less. Yeah, exactly. And if you have a pension as well. And uh, yeah, it's all, oh my God. Retirement is all personal to you. Do not listen. And this, these guys are making good points. You watch these videos. It's all personal. Don't listen to one video and yeah, get crazed out. It's the 4000 a month, including or addition to his Social Security benefits. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, let's be honest. When you mention wife, that significantly raises your required savings. For someone single with no kids, you could probably get by in a cheap area. Yeah. You don't be afraid to move. You don't have to stay where you're at, too. If you're in a high-income area, a high, a high rent area, property tax, insurance, get the hell out. You know, you only live once. Go, you can move to Panama. If you're adventurous, move to Panama. Anyway, that is all I want to go through. I just saying for me, I had enough of the work, the corporate world, the BS, the people, and even just doing the same old job. And I know it, it does not just apply to the tech field. It applies to any field. When you've done something for 30 years, it's, it's time to switch, make a change, and get out. And even teachers I met, they said, I'm done. They couldn't wait to get out, and then they retired. Uh, yeah, that's the way it is, man. You got to go with your gut and make sure uh, your expenses are in check. If they're not, find a way to get out of debt. Get that car paid off. Dump the car. Get a cheaper car. Uh, get that credit card stuff paid off. <clears throat> Cut your subscriptions down and just be realistic. Uh, if you have a house mortgage, maybe consider maybe consider just downsizing the house and selling. Uh, maybe go rent for a year till the market crashes and then buy a house cheap. That's that's maybe my plan. All right, I'm out, guys. What do you think? What's your plan? Uh, this is real stuff. You don't have to stay in a crappy old job if you don't have to. I mean, if you're in debt, that's your fault. You got to consider why you're in debt and get yourself out of that, man. Yeah. All right, go forth, do great things.